much noise. Now I'm used to the noise, and that's weird now. It's like a fan. Who sleeps with a fan going? <laughs> it's probably easy to put that thing up. It's just a, it's alive. <laughs> Joshua 24, let's all stand. going to have to be the Holy Spirit that gets this truth across because I, it's hard. I'm, I'm talking about the word sincerity. Sincere. Are you sincere? Well, you're going to find out, I think. Are you sincere? I'll show you what the word means, actually. I have given you a land for which you did not labor, verse 13, and cities which you built not, and you dwell in them, of the vineyards and olive yards which you planted not do you eat. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. And put away the gods which your fathers served on the other side of the flood and in Egypt, and serve ye the Lord. The Lord never expects us to serve him perfectly. He expects us to serve him sincerely. Sometimes we sincerely make mistakes. Sometimes we're sincerely wrong. Only God is right 100% of the time. Okay, so sincerity. Let's bow our heads. Brother Roscoe, you come and pray for me. Let's pray. <clears throat> Father, thank you tonight for your word, Lord. Amen. And Lord, as we begin a new year, Lord, I pray that you would, uh, Lord, help. We've already began it with fasting, Lord, in sincerity. Hopefully, all of us in sincerity, Lord, trying to get close to you. And Lord, I just pray that you would help us to take uh, take this thing more seriously this year, Lord. Our, 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 our service to you, our our Bible reading, our, our soul winning, our, our bus routes and our Sunday school classes and whatever it is that we do for you. That Help us to empty our minds and our hearts of everything else and focus on this truth that you've given us access to from you.
ladies great job as always I'd like to hear a bad song every once in a while it gets so so boring because we know it's going to be great Amen. no it's awesome thank you your only hope your only hope is Jesus Christ your only hope is Jesus Christ now precept I'll preach at funerals, I'll preach at weddings, I'll preach it anywhere, everywhere, all the time. Your only hope is Jesus Christ. Amen. This new age stuff is of the devil and straight out of hell. Amen. Any, it's all works, it's all works, it's, everything is works besides Jesus Christ. So if you're counting on anything but Jesus to get you to heaven, bab, if you, bab, being baptized, being a member of a church, you will split hell wide open. You will go to hell. You will not pass go. You won't collect anything. You'll go to hell bare naked, and you'll burn in hell forever. Not because you're bad. Hell will be full of good people, church people. But you weren't sincere in your belief in Jesus Christ. You added to Jesus. Jesus said it's finished. He, he, he paid it all. It's all done. You can't add anything to what he did. If I ask you, what do you do for God, I'm sure I would get a variety of answers. Some would say, I usher, I teach, I do work in the nursery, I teach patch, or I count money, or I, uh, and by the way, thank you for you people who count money, you hardly get any recognition, but they stay after church and count the money, Amen. And I appreciate that. That's a big, that's a big deal. We've got to get our money right. If your money's right, nothing's right. I mean, if your money's not right, you will have problems, not only with the government or IRS, but with God. He gives you the money. He expects you to uh, be accountable with your money. Just a little advertisement there. But some of you drive a van. Okay, if I ask you what you do for God... You'd say, I sing in a choir, I sing special. Some would say, I, I drink all the coffee and eat all the donuts in Sunday school. <clears throat> all the things I mentioned were what you do for God. But how you serve God is a totally, completely different thing. What you do for God is one thing. And uh, how you serve God is a different thing. Um, or should I say, how do you serve in the nursery? Or how do you serve? What's your disposition? What's your attitude in the nursery? Do you get all upset when you got to change a poopy diaper? Do you get all upset in the bus ministry if somebody quits coming and you just want to quit? What is your attitude? Okay. Um, What's your attitude driving the bus? You cut people off because you're mad or have an attitude because somebody cuts you off? Now, God understands that, okay? But no, I'm just kidding. Uh, what you do for God versus how you do it. Ladies, what's in your heart when you work in the nursery and somebody leaves a mess and you have to clean it up? Uh, I have to say this about my wife, man. I'm always bragging on her because she's the, perf I mean, she's the best Christian I know. I've never heard her put down somebody, even when they do something wrong. 
she'll just go ahead and clean it up, not say a word. You know, God bless them. Amen. They, they probably had a bad week or a bad day. Me, I'd say fire them. Get rid of them. They're never going to stick in work. <laughs> uh, so what's your, what's your heart condition serving God? Um, some would say it doesn't matter. Let's just get the job done. I've heard preachers say that. I don't believe that. Um, let's be like robots. Let's get the job done. No, God didn't make robots. He made people. <clears throat> and that's not how God thinks about it. All right? Number one, I got to hurry because I got so much. When that red light comes on, I forgot my watch, so please use the red light tonight. Okay? God takes pleasure in how you do things for him, not just what you do for him. We read, we read the verses, uh, and <clears throat> I think I put this up here. Now, therefore, fear the Lord and serve him in sincerity and in truth. Okay, that's all we'll read of that. Serve him in sincerity and in truth. He gave you a mansion. He gave them the promised land. Okay, uh, God loves you. He wants you, uh, Caleb, Caleb have a different spirit. He had a different attitude. He said, because of your spirit, you have a different, there's a different spirit about Caleb. God said that. God's watching your attitude. Caleb said, let's go. God split the Red Sea. You can't take care of giants. Come on. Come on, people. But no, no. God has proved himself to you, okay, and you still won't tithe. God saved you, and you still hoard your money. You won't give God what's his. Because your heart's where your wallet is. It's not serving him. Why, huh? Why? You'll never know Jesus Christ if your money's not right. You'll never know him the way you should because he's, you, you have to prove him, and how you prove him is what's very important to you, and money is important to you and me. It has to be. Otherwise, you can't buy food. You can't buy, you can't buy a car. You can't buy, pay your rent. Money is very important. The love of money is where the evil comes in. Oh, nobody getting my money. Uh, I'll write the check. No, no, I'll give God. I'll, I'll flip him a 20 every once in a while. I feel sorry for you. Because you ne ne you can't be sincere in serving Jesus Christ. But God takes pleasure in how you do things for him. Not just that you do things for him, but how you do them. How do I preach? Do I preach? Am I mad? Do I beat people over the head sometimes? And am, I, am I angry sometimes? Never, never, never. Uh, so, <laughs> yeah, well, see, that's not right. I've done that, too. I do it. I probably still do it out of anger sometimes. And i got to get that right. i got to ask forgiveness. It's my job. And how do you serve God in your job? How do you serve God cleaning the church? How do you serve? What's your attitude? Is anybody following me? I, it's hard. I hope you get this because there was a time when people went to church, heard the truth, and wept over their sins. Today, people go to church, hear a motivational speech, and forget about their sins. It's not, it's, sins are never mentioned because that preachers want the people to come back. I want you to come back too. I'm not going to say it because I just said I'm not going to do that, so I'm not going to say it. Okay, I'll say it. The more people come back, the more headaches the preacher has. No, uh, not really. That's why we're here, get people. Get people saved, change people's life with the good news of Jesus Christ. And by the way, God has set you up in life. How many times did you breathe since you've been in this auditorium and you never even thought about it? Okay, all right. Uh, okay, if Flo walked in here and for the last 20 minutes, she's been saying, okay, flow, breathe, blow it out. Okay, breathe, blow it out. Okay, breathe. No, God takes care of that. God keeps you alive. You say, well, the body automatically, you really believe the body automatically does that? And there's no God that takes care of that? I feel sorry for you. You can't serve him sincerely. God has set us up. And I have given you a land for which you did not labor. Did you see that? Uh, well, let's go back. Uh, let's see. 
Oh, let me read verse 13. I didn't give to him. And I've given you a land for which you did not labor and cities which you built not, and you dwell in them of the vineyards and, and, and olive yards which you planted, which you planted not. Do you eat? Yes, you eat of them. He's given you everything you have. You had nothing to do with it. Jesus, God, giving you your children, your wife, your husband, everything you got. Okay, let's just get right down to it. There's a time when, oh, we already read that. Sincerity, what does it mean? Truthfulness. Are you genuine? Are you genuine? Are you real? Are you just got some kind of facade going on and you're, you know, you got some kind of agenda that you're in it for yourself or, or stuff? I think we all do that at times. We want, we want things for ourselves. I do. Okay, I, I got to watch it. Okay, I get greedy sometimes. I get, you know, I want stuff for myself at times. That's the flesh. You got to overcome that. That comes by the word of God, the truth. Truth shall make you free. And we'll get back to that. Honesty, pureness, and desire to do the right thing for the Lord. That's the Bible definition of sincerity. You want to do the right thing for Jesus, not yourself, not to get ahead, not to be the best bus captain, van captain, or whatever, the best preacher, the best Sunday school teacher. You're genuine. You, 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 know, you don't think you're the best chef, okay? Uh, in fact, you're the only chef. Uh, so you are the best chef. But anyway, okay, you don't think that you're God's gift to shepherdy or whatever they call it. <laughs> Culinary arts, yeah. Uh, are you serving him sincerely? Okay, I didn't ask you what you're doing for God. How are you serving him? What's your attitude like? Amen. Are you serving him sincerely, trustworthy, fully? Okay, or do you have al alternative motives to get ahead? Hmm? Yeah. I've had guys come in here and uh, from other churches, they're preachers, and they sit for a while and they listen, and I found out, and I find out later they wanted to take my place. Look, nobody can take my place. <laughs> we better go back and go over that. Let's go over the, no. Uh, what's your motives? What's your motives? I would quit pastoring tomorrow, I promise you, if I, if I had a, some kind of different motive. I want to glorify Jesus Christ. I want a church that's a soul-winning church. I, I want to glorify him because he deserves it all. Right. The older you get, the more you do. When you're a young preacher, I want to build this, and I want to do that, and I want to do that, and I want to have this, and I want to have the most this, and the most that, and the mostest this, and the mostest that. That just comes from fleshly youth. The older you get, though, the closer you get to death, like I am, okay, you see the whole thing's about Jesus. He should get the glory for everything. Everything comes out of your, my mouth should give him the glory. And we fail in doing that, but that's sincerity. The fact that you want to do that, that's sincere. You're genuine. You're not going to do it all the time because you've got flesh wrapped around your bones. But being genuine, it, you can see genuine people. Genuine people, um, they don't try to hide, they don't try to be somebody they're not all the time, okay? Are you following me just a little bit? Are you serving him sincerely? God wants everybody in the choir. God wants the, the special singing, to, to sing to sing for him, to, for it to come out of your heart. For when you sing, you, you don't have to care. You don't care so much about hitting every note just right. You want God to know. Before you walk up here, you should say, God, this is for you. Please help me. Please help you to get all the glory. Okay? And that's, I prayed that for 24 years before I preached. That's, that's the prayer I pray uh, all the time. Okay, so God get the glory and not the pastor, just because I'm above you, just because I'm way above everybody, doesn't, okay? I got a job just like you got a job. Being a pastor is a job. It really is. <clears throat> some, some guys think it's, it's something that it's not, okay? 
Uh, it's, it's hard work. That's what it is. You know the hardest work is prayer. Let everybody leave. You come down here and pray for an hour and then go home. Let's see. Do it. Do it every Wednesday, every Sunday night. You couldn't do it. You wouldn't do it. Otherwise, you would be doing it. You don't want to do it. Why? Because it's hard work. I don't even do it. I pray for two hours, not one. <laughs> God wants our Sunday school teachers to teach in sincerity and truth. Not just something we must do every Sunday. And it's, it becomes, you know, a gr grudgingly have to do it. This and that. You, you want to have balance in your life too. Live a life serving God. Be genuine, serving Him in truth. And then spend time with your family. Spend time with your husband, your wife. Have a good time. Not in sin. There's a lot of things you can have a good time with. You know, I, Julie wants me to spend time with her during, during the fall and the winter. I say, well, you can watch the football games with me. Come on in, baby. <laughs> Sincerity is the pureness and desire to do the right thing for the Lord. There's a box. Sincerity is when you open the box, okay, what's in there? It's my wedding ring. Something very precious to me, okay? That shows the bond between me and my wife for 40 years. The box... Where does sincerity come from? It comes from the truth. That's the truth. And when you believe the truth, you're free to, have, to be sincere because sincerity only comes from the truth. See, when I, see, that's why we only use one Bible here because I believe that's the truth. There's no other, there's no two truths. Jesus said, I am the way. There's only one God. So that's why I can be sincere because I've got sincerity from the truth. People that aren't sincere, they believe all kinds of stuff. They believe this and that. They, they might have, they study out of the King, the King James and, they, and they, they teach out of the NIV or whatever. They've got all kinds of truths. No, you can't be sincere. You can't be uh, you can't be genuine because there's only one genuine truth, and that's the Bible. That's the Word of God. That's where you get it. What does the Bible say? The truth shall set you free. Exactly. Who said that? Yes. I taught you that, didn't I? Yes. In the, in the truck. See? Uh, yeah, people say that all the time. And I, one day, years ago, I said, that's not right, because I just read that verse. It makes you free. It makes you sincere. It makes, I, I, look, Jesus, God said it. I believe it, and that settles it. That's not right. God said it. That settles it. Whether I believe it or not, it's still the truth. Now, if I believe it, that sets me, that makes me free. See, I said it too. That makes me free to be genuine, to be sincere, and not worry about whether who I'm gonna offend, not worry about if they offend me. And I'm, I'm gonna go because I got the truth and you can't hurt me. Grave, where is thy victor? There is none. You can't you kill, you can't kill me. I'm gonna live forever. You can kill this flesh and this body. Thank God, I need to get rid of it. I was at the VA all day today. Some, some Indian doctor lady, very sweet. Uh, she talked like the Indians talk, you know. Only one straw, please. Only one mustard. Uh, but she, she's, uh, you know, making me do this and that. And I was like a pretzel and all this stuff. And, she asked, me, uh, she asked me what I did. I said, I'm a pastor of a church. And she said, oh, what church? I said, the Church of Satan on Austin Highway, 458, <laughs> like I always do, just to see if they're paying attention. She thought that was the funniest thing. She, we went out, and the secretary, she told them, 
tell them what church you pastor. I said, church is saying, oh, really? Some are, some are try to be sincere like, oh, that's sweet. That's nice. <laughs> Look, the only reason you can get excited when some, I try to get a smaller box of jewelry comes in. You know, when you get something for your birthday or Christmas in a small box, you're excited, right? Because you know it's, hey, hey. And you open it up, it's a diamond ring or, you know, it's a necklace. It costs somebody some money. But the only reason you get excited is you see the box. Some, look, you got to get excited about the box. You got to get excited of where truth and where you become sincere. Your belief in this. If you read it every day, you will become sincere. You can't help it because this is a sincere God. That's what he is. And that's what he wrote. And that's where you, you, you really become real. Okay? You don't worry about, you, 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 you know, be offended and all this stuff and and, you, and, and when you don't, when you don't get excited about the box, and you don't open up the box, and you leave the box on your dashboard or in your, or in your, in your bedroom all week, okay, that's when you become bitter. Because you're trying to do things for God, but you, you don't understand that's what he doesn't want, just do things. He wants you to do it with sincerity. He wants you to do it because you love him. And the only way you're going to love him is to get this inside your heart. Obey his commands. If you're not tithing, you can't love him. Let, hey, put, uh, put up the microphone a little bit. If you don't tithe, you cannot love God. Amen. Amen. Yeah, walk out on me if you want to. And I'm just messing with you, dude. <laughs> Wait a minute, I can't get angry, okay? <laughs> you see him turn around, whoa. Oh, wow. See those cartoons? <laughs> Their eyeballs come out. <laughs> because Jesus said, how many times have I said it? How many times have I opened up the box and given you the truth? If you love me, Jesus said, keep my commandments. You are commanded to tithe. This is not a tithing message, so I'm, I'm not going to believe it right there. And the only reason we get excited about the box is that we know what's inside the box. The truth is inside the box. The world does not have the truth. Fox News does not have the truth. CNN definitely does not have the truth. Any politician does not have the truth. The best one, okay, and he's still a sinner, is Donald Trump. He loves his country and wants to do right. He gets my vote. He gets my vote. I don't care. You're a, oh, don't get me started. It's disappointing when there's nothing inside the box. It's not that there's nothing inside the box. You're disappointed because you never opened the box. How should you know? You very rarely open the box. You'll open the box when, when somebody's dying in your family. You'll open the box when you lose your job or you, you lose your health. You'll open the box. Because you're dead, but guess what? God knows your heart, and He knows you're not sincere. He knows you're hurt, and you want to fix that hurt. You see the difference? And and that's natural. You gotta you gotta fight that, and that's why you gotta read the Word, and that'll help you be sincere and not just be about yourself. Sincerity is what's in the inside. And sometimes it oozes on the outside, doesn't it? You see somebody up here singing a special and they're crying and they can't, they have to stop and the music has to come around again. Well, that's the greatest thing there is because that's the truth, that's their sincerity, that's the genuineness of them come oozing out. What are tears? I don't know who said it, but I love it. Tears are the language of the soul. Ooh, that's so true, right? Oh, I got to hurry. I got to really hurry. Sometimes when life throws its curveball and things go wrong in our life or somebody takes advantage of us, the box of your life is open 
and we find nothing exciting, no sincerity, nothing but anger, bitterness, and complaining. Why? Because you're trying to find an answer to your problem, which is okay. But you've only opened it once this month. You don't think this is the living word, and it bring, it's life, the word. Remember we did the Bible study on the word? It's life. It's life. Without it, you're dead. Without it, you're not genuine. You don't have the truth, and you're searching. Not that you're evil. You just missed it. You missed it. You can't make an end run. I like doing that. I like saying that. People think they can make it, make it an end run around the church, doing without the church. You know, the hippies will say, I can worship God in the trees just like I can in church. No, you can't. That's not God's plan. God's plan is the church. You assemble yourself on Sunday, first day of the week. That's his plan, not in the woods. Well, I guess it could be in the woods, couldn't it? If the preacher said, we're going to meet in the woods because they shut down the church because of COVID, we're going to meet in the, uh, ecclesia is the Greek word for church. It's just the assemble, assembly of, of believers. That's what it means. Doesn't mean you've got to have a brick building to meet there. But that's what we do because we like air conditioning. Amen. Somebody shout amen. amen. And we like heat every once in a while. Once or twice in Texas. Sincerity is what's on the inside and the truth is the box that protects that insincerity. You stop reading your Bible... And I guarantee you, you're going to get a bad attitude because it's going to be about you, okay, and not about him. That's my problem. He shall cover thee with his feathers, and under his wings thou shalt trust. His truth, the box, shall be thy shield and buckler. The word of God. What do you, do you read your Bible? There's a lot of people who are sincere, but their sincerity is taken advantage of, okay, because they don't read the Bible. That's how TV preachers milk literally millions out of God's people to live lavish lifestyles and buy Lear jets because there's not, they're, they're not truth tellers. They're not after what's in the box. That they use sincerity, okay, to get money from people to be to their own gain because they're their own God. It's all about them. Not just TV preachers, all kinds of believers. God says, when you serve me, you serve me with sincerity. But don't forget to wrap it in the truth so we can protect you, okay? What it, we, God wants to protect what is beautiful on the inside, what is worth something, and that's your sincerity. God's not interested in your silver, your gold, your rings, or anything. He wants your heart, doesn't the Bible say he wants your heart. So he tests you. He tests you with your money. He tests you with your time. He tests you. Are you using your talent? Are you, are you doing anything in the church? Are you singing in the choir? The truth, God's, you don't, and, and you, I hear this all the time. Well, I can't sing. Well, who can? Who can't sing? Just a few ladies and Larry, maybe Shannon, maybe. Okay. That's stretching a little bit, but no. Just kidding. The truth, God's word protects our being genuine. It protects your sincerity so we can live a genuine life for Christ. Let's be a sincere church. And that's hard to keep that. You got to, you know, that's why I'm on you. Read your Bible, read your Bible, read your Bible. I mean, I couldn't last for 24 years if I didn't read my Bible every day. Are you kidding me? I could, I could, I could get over for a while, you know, like these TV preachers do. But you ain't got no money, so I would be just wasting my time if I was after money, right? We wouldn't be running buses and running vans. We wouldn't be going to the places to, that Jesus said call the poor, okay? We wouldn't put flyers on, on, on windshields and get uh, mannies and everybody else over the years, okay? We'd be in Stone Oak. All right, we'd be trying to get the, the, the middle class, the upper middle class people, because we would think that's what Jesus wants. Um, okay, I'm going to go a little faster. I got five minutes. Sincerity has no sarcasm. Sincerity has no skepticism. Did I spell that right? 
or distrust or scorn or contempt. To serve the Lord in sincerity is to be genuine and be authentic with as little hypocrisy as you can. Remember, we're flesh, so you're, you're not going to... <laughs> You're not going to be 100% on those all the time. If you are, then we've met Jesus, okay? And there's no Jesus, although we led a guy named Jesus to the Lord the other day, I think. Uh, we baptized Jesus a few times over the year. Uh, you want revival? You let everyone come to church with the attitude, I'm, I'm here for no other reason but because I love Jesus Christ. Did you come to church? Did you tell yourself before you came tonight, I'm coming because I love Jesus? I did. The only reason I did because I was preaching this message. But most of the time, I don't, I don't say that. I don't tell myself that. Now, I have uh, more, more the wiser, older I get. Let's say older I get, not wiser. The older I get, the more I realize. The more I say, I love you, Jesus. I love you, Lord. I just want you to know that. Please forgive me for failing to show that love to you, and the light's on, and I'm, i got to hurry. God says that how I want you to serve me, but I want you to add one thing, and that will protect his <laughs> Truth. Did you, get, did you get that? Truth. The box. Truth. The Word of God will protect what's really valuable to God, and that's your sincere heart. Number three. Belief in the Word of God gives us the freedom to be sincere. You're free because you have the truth. When you know the truth, you don't worry about anything else. You've got the truth. So what, what the world throws at you, what your family throws at you, I mean, it's going to hurt you, sure, and we're going to have bad attitudes at times. But in the end, at the end of the day, you have the truth, so you are the only one that's free. You're going to heaven when you die. That's freedom, man. The God of the universe is your daddy. That's freedom. I believe that marriage is strictly between a man and a woman. That gives me freedom because that's an absolute in my, in my life. I don't have to worry, am I right or am I wrong? Should I, should I uh, uh, say that gay couples are okay? Or should I, should I preach this or should I preach? Everybody's preaching, you know, uh, the, you know, we, should, we shouldn't preach against uh, homosexuality. This or should I, should I? No, I don't have to worry about that. It, homosexuality, marriage between a man and a man, is of the devil and straight out of hell. Yeah. Why? Oh. Why? Because the God, God says, okay, I open the box, okay, and I'm free because I saw in the box that God says marriage is between a man and a woman. What about this gender thing? I know I'm free. I don't have to worry about that stuff because I know what the Bible says. I'm free because the truth protects my sincerity. Okay? God made male and God made female. I close the box and I preach. At work, you close the box and you can, you know, stand up for Jesus. I got so much more, but. You know, I'm a nice preacher, and I'm going to let you go home on time. Yeah. Oh. I had something really good here at the end, I think. Well, listen, let me go through this real quick, or what I got up here. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. I covered that, didn't I? God said it. That settles it, no doubt. Don't be tainted by what the world says. Protect the beauty of your sincerity by trusting the truth. Trust what the Bible says, man. That's why you don't want two or three versions. You'll be confused. You won't be free. You, won't be, you can't be sincere because you'll be wondering which one is the truth. There's only one truth. That's Jesus Christ. And the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. The thing that attracts you to this church is the fact that we believe in something. Some of you just come, come because of tacos. I understand that's okay. I don't blame you. It's what we believe that protects how we serve Christ either with sincerity or with skepticism and apathy, right? You don't care because you're so confused. You don't, you don't, you don't open the box. You don't see what was valuable to God, really. Uh, you think, uh, and you're totally concerned with you make it in life, if you getting a house or a nice car or a nice job 
Well, see, you missed it all. That, that stuff's not going to make you happy. It doesn't hurt to have it. God will give you the other thing. Seek you first the kingdom of God, and the other thing shall be added to him. You haven't opened the box and see what's valuable to God, and that's you being sincere. Let's, close, let's bow our heads and close our eyes. Father, I love the fact that I pastor.